Today, we're reviewing the smallest smartphone I've ever seen. No, not this one. This one. Hey, and welcome to GI Review. Today, we're looking at a phone that poses an interesting question. How important is the screen size and thinness of our smartphones? One of the most persistent trends in smartphone design has been to make the screen larger and the phone thinner. While this is often seen as an improvement, and it is for tasks like watching videos, playing games, and even working on documents, it comes at the expense of some very real trade-offs, such as smaller batteries, lack of ports, and increased susceptibility to damage. And today's gadget is no exception. The Atom by Unihertz is the self-proclaimed world's smallest 4G rugged smartphone. Now looking at the device, it reminds me of phones of a pre-smartphone era. Phones like the Nokia 3310, or my first phone, the Motorola C139. But while it looks like my phone from a decade ago, the internal specs, however, are much closer to my current phone. To start off, the phone supports 4G and runs Android 8.1 Oreo. It's got an octa-core processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal memory, and two cameras, a 16 megapixel camera on the back and an 8 megapixel camera on the front. It has a fingerprint reader, NFC, a USB-C port, and yes, a headphone jack. One of the Atom's key selling points is its ruggedness. It's built with Gorilla Glass and has a strong exterior that protects against drops and scratches. It's rated IP68, meaning it has a high level of dust protection and is waterproof. Now all that sounds good, especially knowing that this phone costs less than $300. But then you have to factor in the phone's size. It's 18.8 millimeters thick with a 2.45 inch screen that has a resolution of 240 by 432 pixels. That's less resolution than the latest Apple Watch. But specs are only one part of a phone. Let's see just how usable this mini smartphone really is. So I'm about five days into using the Atom, and in a lot of ways, the Atom is similar to my everyday smartphone. It's fast, it's responsive, and it's got all the same features and apps that I have. But everything is smaller, which in most cases makes things difficult. Take for instance typing. While using a full touchscreen keyboard on this display is not as hard as I initially imagined, my accuracy certainly has gone down compared to a normal smartphone. So instead, I've been relying on speech recognition features whenever offered. Other things that were easy on a larger phone become difficult and frustrating on the Atom, like reading the news or using social networking apps. But you really start to see the limitations of a small phone when watching videos or playing games. With a low resolution screen, videos are very pixelated, and the device simply is not large enough to enjoy most games. As for the cameras, you can see some of my tests here. The images are very soft and way behind most modern smartphone cameras. However, the area where this phone stands out is in its durability. It feels really solid and protected. I wouldn't worry about dropping this phone and I wouldn't hesitate to bring it underwater. So while the phone has some decent specs, the form factor makes using this phone a hassle. I can't see myself seriously using this as my everyday phone. But I do still think there is a use for this device, and it's for the outdoor enthusiast. There's been times before when I'm either at a beach or on the mountain, where I just don't bring my phone due to the risk of it getting damaged. And if you're spending a lot of time in these environments, it might be worth it to pick up the Atom. It's relatively cheap and super durable, and while yes, it's a bit annoying to use, it can do all the things your normal smartphone can do. Meet the gaze tray. The first wireless charger that fits beautifully into your space as it powers all of your devices. We've included space for your Apple Watch, AirPods, and smartphone. Perfect for home or for the office. Gaze Tray keeps your devices and other treasured items close at hand. Smart, stylish, modern, and perfectly at home on your desk. Gaze Tray includes a special case, so you can wirelessly charge your AirPods. Smaller than a sheet of paper, Gaze Tray travels light. 
Made especially for your iPhone, Apple Watch, and AirPods, the Gaze Tray has contours to cradle each one while they're charged quickly, safely, and entirely without wires. And two standard USB ports to keep your options open. The Gaze Tray comes in three luxurious finishes and a palette of nine colors to match any interior. You've spent time curating and designing the perfect space. At Gaze Lab, we believe that your devices shouldn't be the exception. They should blend seamlessly into your well-designed life. Help us make smarter homes and workspaces a reality. Support us with Gaze Tray. Every year, big brands like Beats and Bows drop millions of dollars on their ad campaigns. It's hard for people to see how good the product really is through all the celebrity endorsements. So we always keep our eyes on some up-and-comers in the industry. Today we got our hands on the MU6. The Indiegogo team picked the headphone in their favorite collection. And the company claimed their headphone could perform even better than the Bose QC35 too. So we test it out. Okay, so I'm on my way to work now. I'm not wearing any mic. So I'm taking the sound straight from the headphone and hopefully it sounds good. So I'm gonna stop by listening to listening to Planet Money. It's pretty loud out. And my volume is 60 percent and it sounds pretty loud and clear. In short, the noise cancelling works really well. In a subway, I could keep the volume at around 60% listening to a podcast, when the Bose is performing at about 70%. But I wouldn't say it's a discernible difference for everyday users. You'll probably need a graph to see the difference. What stood out was the sound quality. The microphone quality is pretty amazing. The MU6 uses some technology to separate human sound from regular noise. Also, when you're listening to something quiet like a podcast, it doesn't have the typical white noise most noise-canceling headphones have. It performed a lot better than the Apple native AirPods. The more we use the MU6, the more we like the user experience. Let's say you're working in an office and one of your coworkers is trying to talk to you. You can just put your hands on your left ear and it will pause the noise canceling function. It will resume after you put your hands down. The headphone also comes with an elegant charger, so you can put your headphone on and charge it wirelessly. The headphone has a smart button you can invoke Siri on just by pressing it. It works great with the iOS system, and it feels like a native Apple product. The MU6 also has an app. The user experience is similar to the Bose app, but it allows users to customize more. They built a system that customizes the sound setting to individual ears. Because all our ears work differently, we respond to different frequencies differently. You can do the test and it will adjust the sound quality for you. As a prototype, the MU6 is something we can get behind, but we don't think it's a finished product yet. The app could get glitchy at times and the Bose is a lot more lighter and softer on the ears. In terms of the sound quality, we did a quick pull in the office. Most people still prefer the sound from the Bose, but the MU6 isn't far behind. If the user spends some time with the customization, the sound might just do. The company says they are still working to improve their product. At the end of the day, when it comes down to the pricing, the $149 price tag is a lot more attractive than Bose. For the final verdict, we might just have to wait for the final product to come out. Welcome to GI Review. Today we're unboxing the Kova Robot, the suitcase that follows you. The tech is pretty straightforward. The luggage has a distance sensor. After activating it, it will chase after wherever you go. It works great on smooth floor or regular carpets. However, it is not designed to handle tougher outdoor surface. It might have some trouble getting over bigger cracks on the ground. You can link your phone with the suitcase, and it will trigger an alarm if the suitcase fails to follow. It is still a little strange to leave your suitcase behind, but it will definitely turn some heads on the street. You can also switch to menu mode when you're outdoor or in a crowded area. It even works surprisingly well in tight corners. In terms of the suitcase itself, it doesn't have a zipper. Instead, it uses a combination lock to bind the shells together. 
The suitcase itself weighs around 12 pounds, and it will carry 24 pounds of luggage and follow you for about 5 hours or 12.4 miles with one full charge. The battery is located inside, and once you snap it in, it's ready to go. But can you control a drone with just your mind? If you've seen our other videos, you know we're huge fans of drones. And we're always on the lookout for new or interesting drones. Recently, one drone caught our attention, the U-Drone, which claims to be a drone you can control with your mind. We've got it here with us today in the studio, so let's see if it works. The U-Drone comes with a drone body, extra propellers, a propeller tool, safety guards, two batteries, and a charging cable. To use the mind control features, you'll need the U-Mind Lite, which comes with the U-Mind headset and a charging cable. Right now on Kickstarter, you can get all of this for $279, making it one of the cheapest drones we've ever used. Okay, so I've got the headset on, the drone is ready. All I have to do is press the brain icon and think about flying. There we go. All I have to do is think about flying. Hey, there we go, and the drone will fly. All right, let's bring it back. Oh, let's see, can I fly this thing back? Uh, so the brain controls do work, but it takes some time to get used to. Focusing and relaxing controls the drone's height, tilting your head controls the direction of the drone, and turning your head causes the drone to rotate. Biting down on your back teeth will cause the drone to land, and you can also fly the drone with your phone, which offers more precise control. So after using the drone for a few days, what do I think about it? Well, when reviewing drones, I like to look at a few key factors, like the size, battery, camera quality, and any software features. For the size, the U-Drone is definitely the smallest drone I've ever flown. And there are some advantages to that. It's super portable, even with all the accessories. It's small enough to just toss into any bag. And you can easily fly it indoors, which is something I definitely wouldn't recommend doing with larger drones. But also due to its size, it's not as stable in high winds. Luckily, it comes with these safety guards because we have crashed this thing a whole lot. With the small size also comes small batteries. Now these small drones are known for short flight time. And with the U-Drone, I was averaging about 15 minutes for charge, which is not great. And charging the batteries can also be pretty annoying. You have to put them in the drone, then charge through this micro USB port. So you can't fly and charge at the same time. As for the camera quality, there's not much to say. You can see some of the footage here. I'd put it on par with a five-year-old cell phone. Good enough for social media, but not really professional quality. Also, the drone doesn't have a gimbal, so you can't change the angle of the camera. Lastly, the software features. Now, for the most part, I really like the software features. The app is well-made and easy to use. Calibrating the drone and headset is simple and only takes a few seconds. Now, the drone has a selfie mode where you can trigger photos just by blinking or by making a P sign, which works without any issues. Now the software feature that I thought was lacking is the subject tracking. Perhaps I've been spoiled by using DJI's amazing active track, but U-Drone subject tracking just didn't work for me most of the time. It was able to keep the subject in frame, but couldn't follow the subject like was promised on their Kickstarter. So what are my final thoughts? Flying the U-Drone with the U-Mind headset is probably the most fun I've ever had with a drone. Would I use it for a professional video? No, but it's a casual drone that's more about the fun of flying than the image quality and it's so small you can have it with you at all times. And also, it's a drone that has mind control. I mean, that's still pretty cool to me.